Baseball had a fantastic season on the field. There were three terrific division races that went right down to the final weekend and beyond. 1980 will be remembered first because it turned us into a country of George Brett watchers. What we were watching for much of the season was the emergence of an outstanding ball player into a national treasure. Of all the people in this country who have at one time held a bat in their hands and tried to hit a ball with it, it was clear that Brett could do it better than anyone. The nation turned its eye to Kansas City for months as he hit in 30 games in a row and challenged 400 for two months. He wound up at 390 averaged a run batted in per game, establishing himself as the best pure hitter for power and average since Ted Williams, Stan Musial, and Hank Aaron. When they weren't pitching to George Brett, there were some pitchers having great years too. Steve Stone of the Orioles became the biggest bargain in the free agent market, but he won 25 games and the American League Cy Young Award. Stone achieved that after curing a serious shoulder injury with conditioning rather than with the operation and the prayer. Steve Carlton won 24 games in his third Cy Young Award for the Phillies. And he continued to treat the media like a disease. In Houston, J.R. Richard, the other dominant pitcher in the National League, suffered a real affliction. A major stroke that temporarily paralyzed him and required extensive surgery. As tragic as that was, because weakness and fatigue were so alien to him, Richards behaved in a curious, frightened, closed-mouthed way for weeks before the actual stroke. His behavior confused both teammates and the media, and in the heat of a pennant race, unkind, unjustified accusations of malingering were made. They left a smoldering bitterness. I think long after that, the scars in his heart from this despicable attack by certain writers who wrote certain articles will live with him forever. Two months later, as the Astros fought against odds to stay in the race, Richards made a dramatic appearance at the Astrodome. His career still remains in doubt. Deep in pitching, the Astros hung on, winning a one-game playoff with the Dodgers in the 163rd game of the season. That weekend was a study in climaxes. On the final Saturday of the regular season, Steve Garvey kept the Dodgers alive with this home run in Los Angeles. And doesn't he always seem to get the big hit? the right time. Meanwhile, in New York, Reggie Jackson, who was having one of his best seasons with 40 home runs, hit another one that clinched the division for the Yankees. And in Montreal, Mike Schmidt hit his fourth home run in four days, and his 93rd in two seasons, to win for the Phillies. Big players coming through with big hits and big games, which was spotlighted in a classic duel at the side of the American League playoffs. Part two of the George Brett Show, you might call it. After preserving a victory in the second game with a strong relay throw, thus disturbing Yankee owner George Steinbrenner so much that he eventually fired manager Dick Hauser, who had won only 103 games, Brett came to the plate with the game on the bases in the third game. Confronting him, Goose Gossett, maybe the hardest throwing pitcher in captivity. The irresistible swing met the unhittable object and sent it far into the night also sent the Royals into their first World Series. Over in the National League, the Phillies and the Astros had a wonderfully cockeyed playoff series, a series that had the whole country going nuts. Four of the games went into extra innings. Tug McGraw, the irrepressible former You Gotta Believe New York Met, once again emerged as a central character for the Phillies. McGraw, always the team's emotional leader, would appear in nine of the 11 postseason games. He often booed Greg Lazinski won the first game in Philadelphia with this home run. And Tug McGraw relieved. The Astros took the second game in 10 innings, the first of four straight extra inning games, as the Phillies somehow managed to strand about 50 runners. In Houston, the Astros suffered a blow to rival the loss of J.R. Richard. And Cesar Cedeno broke his ankle running out a ground ball in the sixth inning. But Houston did finally win the third game. They won it one to nothing in the 11th inning. And who was the hero? None other than the veteran Joe Morgan. Morgan got a triple right here that turned out to be something of a last hurrah for him. The great second baseman who had so many fine years with Cincinnati before rejoining Houston was released right after the series. The fourth game was filled with even more craziness. The 
Would you believe a 20-minute rhubarb over a triple play that was really a double play? Had the pitcher Vern Rule catch or trap the baseball? Because of conflicting signals given by umpires, the triple play finally was reduced to a double play. Then in the bottom of the inning, left fielder Lonnie Smith, the Phillies, after misjudging a fly ball on the previous play, launched this uh, throw. And finally in the 10th inning, Greg Lazinski drove in the winning run. That run being Pete Rose, who was warming up for the season. And doesn't this remind you of another time, another place? The All-Star game of a few years back. Crash! And the winning run was scored. And once again, on came Tug McGraw to preserve the win to give himself yet another save. The fifth and deciding game was still more improbable. Trailing 5-2 to two to Nolan Ryan, the Phillies scored five runs in the eighth inning. The Astros came right back to tie the game in the last half of the eighth. In the tenth inning, Dell Unser's pinch double and Gary Maddox's single resulted in the winning run. As the Phillies won their first pennant in 30 years. But we hadn't seen nothing, folks. There was still a World Series to be played. Willie Aikens celebrated his 26th birthday in the first game of the World Series with two home runs. Billy served notice that they came not to play, but to win. And Larry Bowles sold second with the Royals leading 4 to nothing. Bank McBride had a three-run homer, and the Phillies went on to win their first World Series game in 65 years. With Steve Carlton pitching, they made it two in a row the next night in a game that will go down in history with the new king of HR. Uh, not home runs, hemorrhoids. George Brett's hemorrhoids. Poor George, the same permitted him to get only two hits and two swings before leaving. By the third game in Kansas City, Brett said it was all behind him now. To prove it, he had a home run, his very first at bat. Mike Schmidt also homered, but Frank White robbed him of the bid for a game-winning hit in the 10th inning. And then, Willie Aikens drove in the winning run against Tug McGraw. In the fourth game, Aikens hit two more huge home runs, putting him in a rare league with Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig for two two-homer games in a World Series. But once again, it was Brett and his now-famous backside that stole the show. Dickie Knowles sent Brett sprawling on his ailment. And that brought KC manager Jim I a running and a yelling. Stop it right now! Stop it right now! Go ahead and stop it! Stop it out there! Go ahead and tell him! We ain't gonna have that! I'll stop it! No, we ain't gonna stop it right now! We ain't gonna stop it! You just go you get better go get him! Although Brett got only three singles in the next two games, nobody really thought the knockdown had intimidated him. But it did carry a message of the Phillies' serious intentions on winning their first World Series in 98 years. And in the fifth game, that message became public. It was a classic. Mike Schmidt's homer gave the Phillies their only two runs, and they trailed going to the ninth inning, three to two. Then Schmidt, who wound up as the series MVP to go with his National League MVP award, singled. Ageless Del Unser followed with a pinch hit that scored Schmidt. And Manny Trio's infield hit scored Del Unser. And that left it to Tug McGraw once more to protect the lead. He did. Not without the customary theatrics. McGraw loaded the bases. That up the presence of Jose Cardinal. But it was McGraw who built the drama like a playwright. In the end, he who took the fouls again. Cardinal was out. And the Phillies were almost in. The sixth game back in Philadelphia was nearly a rerun. The Phillies led 4-1 to one in the ninth inning. But the team's other leader, Pete Rose, makes this great pass. It wasn't over yet. McGraw loaded the bases once more. It's not supposed to be easy in Philly, you see. This team had always found a way to lose in postseason play before. And once again, one more time, McGraw ended it with a floor. He struck out Willie Wilson. W.C. Field, said McGraw, which is he could celebrate with us. I spent a lot of years in Philadelphia as a columnist. The bad years. So down at the sixth game, a really interesting thing happened from my view. Sensing the really deep frustration of the fans for so many years, frustration ingrained in the pavement, a group of Phillies came out on the field after the game.
Pete Rose, Dallas Green, I don't remember the others. They all had champagne bottles, raised toast to the fans. Warm me heart. Uh, you mentioned Pete Rose, Larry, and it was a Philadelphia television station that kicked in about $600,000 just to get him away from Cincinnati. And look at the big TV bucks that Ted Turner is spending down in Atlanta, and Gene Autry and George Steinbrenner, just a fact of life.